So we're gonna make. Also, if you hit select, you can turn on the assist, and that can help you if you're having trouble navigating some of these environments. Sometimes it can be tricky, so it's good to have. So you're gonna head to the materia shop, and this is where my guide is going to show you the way. So you're gonna buy. Barrett gave you 1500 gil, so you're gonna buy one fire. Uh, you already have. You're gonna buy one lightning, and that's all you're gonna buy. Again, that's all you're gonna buy. So, I'll explain this. You're gonna want two fire materia and two lightning materia, and one restore materia. Now, you're gonna get. You're gonna get a fire material from for free when you recruit another character a little bit later in the game. So you're gonna want two lightning and two fire, and you're gonna want to put them on double growth slots as soon as you can, and keep them on double growth slots. And I'll show you how to do that because what you want to do by the mid game is to have two fire materia at level three because materia uh, let's show you uh, if you go to the materia section in the menu you'll see that the materia level by collecting AP from battles and you see that lightning has four levels so once you get it to level three you unlock bolt three or thund thundaga as they call it in the newer translations and you want two of those. In fact, you want two of the two of fire threes as soon as you can by the mid game, because you can pair each of those with a MP absorb and an all material. And essentially, you're gonna have a group target fire three that hits every enemy, and then it absorbs all that MP back. So you're gonna have essentially. Some, some of you guys that play this game know about the enemy skill materia. And a lot of people that play this game rely on beta, which is a very powerful group target fire enemy skill. And that's important because you're going to have one of the featured dungeons in the game is the northern, uh, the mountains on the northern continent. And there's a lot of enemies weak to fire. And a lot of people use beta, but in my opinion, that's weak. Yeah. And you don't want to be weak. You want to be strong. So you're going to follow my guide. And ignore every other Final Fantasy VII guide that you've ever seen. You're going to want to buy some armor. You're going to get three iron bangles and assault gun. You already have because you picked up, and you're going to ignore the grenade. Most of those damage items I ignore because why would you want to use items when you can use materia? Okay. And then you switch to the materia menu by hitting square if you didn't know. It's handy. Uh, I'm going to equip. Well, let's not do that yet. Let's go up to the top floor. Well, not the top floor. It's just above the weapon shop. And if you talk to this, if you pick up this all materia, then he's going to give you a chest, and that's going to have an ether. Okay, so now you've picked up the materia. So you're gonna give cloud, restore, and pair it with an all materia. And then give each of your party members some nukes. Actually, I changed my mind. Uh, you're gonna give Barrett lightning and pair it with an all materia. In the early game, 
I don't worry about healing because the enemies don't really hurt you that much. So, let's go over unlocking limit breaks. So, there's four levels of limit breaks for most characters, except for one of the characters. And you unlock higher levels by getting kills with the character. The amount of kills that character kills. Pardon me. Getting a little gassy, sorry. The amount of kills unlocks higher level limit breaks. In addition, within each level is a, I'm sorry, which in each level is a second one, a second limit break for most characters except for two. And to unlock that second limit break, you just need to use the first one. Like, I think it's like seven times for most characters. <laughs> another, I guess that's another reference to the number seven. And then, and thereabouts, I don't know exactly the number, but. So, for that reason, I don't use Cloud as a damage dealer for most of the game. I use him as a healer and kind of as a support character. Even though he has high strength and magic, his magic stat is actually the second highest in the game. And he's tied with the highest strength with Bear, Tifa, and another character. So Cloud is very strong in this game. He is a super soldier, essentially. Other characters get unique abilities that have their use and purpose, but on average, Cloud is the best, strongest fighter in your group. And that's great, because that, in my opinion, that's not what he is in the remake. But in the uh, in the name of unlocking people's limit breaks, I will let other characters get kills, and you let Cloud kind of heal and support for the most part because his high magic stat also makes his cures stronger, which is nice, and he has a pretty high, fairly high MP stat. So, anyways, we gotta get this guy moving, so we'll save here, I'll head to the train, and then I'll probably cut out most of that dialogue, and I'll see you a little bit. We just skipped through some cutscenes, uh, since, since we last left, we had finished up in sector 7 bought some materia so I'll go through the equipment setup uh, just iron bangles for everyone and then for materia setup I put restore on cloud because you don't want cloud to get you don't want cloud to get a lot of kills in the early game you want to get a lot of kills with Barrett, in my opinion. Because Barrett is pretty good in the early game. He has high strength and he gets a pretty high damage weapon as soon as you leave Midgar. So he's good to use in the early game. He's not good in the mid game. He's really good in the end game. So for that reason, I rack up a lot of kills with Barrett because that's how you unlock your higher level limit breaks. Your higher level limit breaks unlock by getting kills with that character. And also I gave Tifa lightning and ice. Ice is not very useful in Final Fantasy 7. But just get one anyway. There's, there's like a handful of enemies that are weak to ice in the early game that you can use. Ice for. Uh, other than that, don't don't try to get a lot of kills with Tifa in the early game. She's useful. She's really useful in the mid game, and still pretty good in the end game. So that for that reason, I gave the all material linked to lightning for Barrett. 
that will let you group target lightning which is useful for getting a lot of kills anyways let's get on with the show okay so Tiva is gonna ask you to look at their railway map with her and then the alarm's gonna go off. So it looks like the ID that Jesse made for us are not good. Either that or Sharon knew that we were coming. Anyway, there's gonna be a timer on each train car. So you have to proceed to the front of the train before it gets locked down. Every train car has someone to talk to to get items. On the first car, it's that guy sleeping in the back. And the second car is this dude. Okay, get through the dialogue. It's this dude. You have to tell him. Yeah. And then hurry and get to the next car. In this car, someone will steal an item from you. You have to talk to him twice and give you that and back. Uh, almost missed that one. This one, I think you just keep running. And we made it to the last car. If you don't make it to the last train car, then they end up jumping off the train further away from the sector 5 reactor so you have to walk a little bit my opinion is best to make it to the front of the train it just really cuts down on the amount of battles you have to fight said it before and I'll reiterate don't level grind in the early game it's pointless in Final Fantasy 7 in my opinion the the battles in early game are really boring because you don't really have a lot of abilities and you're pretty weak so the faster you can get to the mid game the more fun it is in my opinion. So after we get through this dialogue, you're supposed to proceed forward. Now, some people suggest that you proceed down and go all the way down, and then you can fight these respawn guards to like get a bunch of kills and get higher level, unlock higher level limit breaks. In my opinion, that's a waste of time. So my guide will be guide to the most optimal routes through dungeons. So basically, the routes you take to fight the least amount of battles and pick up all the best treasure. The best items to buy in the shops. Which you'll find is that most of the shops, especially in the early early game, don't have any useful items. So you want to skip buying most of the items in the shops. Alrighty, you picked up that ether, you're gonna proceed down. Now if 
if these uh, pre-rendered environments are confusing to navigate for you, then you can hit select to open up the assist. It's a big help. I really wish they'd brought that back for Final Fantasy VIII, but they didn't. You can go... Oh, we're gonna fight a battle. There's some enemies weak to lightning. Those blowfish in the back, I believe, are, are weak to lightning. Wow. Attacks in the early game are very weak. So, even if you have... Even if you have... Barrett and Tifa, who are mostly dedicated physical attackers. They're not going to be very useful using physical attacks in the early game. In the mid to late game is when physical attacks become very strong. And in the late game, arguably, arguably physical attacks are just as good, if not better, than mag magic users. But in the early game... is best to use your magic. Also, feel free to stop and smell the roses if you're playing through Final Fantasy VII. Talk to people. Experience the dialogue, experience the story. I'm just showing you the optimal routes. Go down the slide. Proceed. Down, down, down. Now this should look familiar to you. The layout of the Sector 5 reactor is pretty similar to the Sector 1 reactor from the opening. Alrighty. One attack on these enemies should make them one shotable. Well, no. Surprisingly, not. I have a lot of HP, apparently. Deadly Waste, I believe it's an item that inflicts poison on the enemy. You get a lot of these, uh, these items that do elemental damage and inflict status effects on the enemy in FF7. It's nice that you can get them, but they're not very useful. Although they do have a use in the end game, if you guys don't know, you can duplicate items using a bugged materia. The W item glitch, which obviously I'm going to show you how to do. You can duplicate power sources, and I believe the speed sources and the luck sources very easily. You can actually duplicate all the sources and stat max all your characters however the magic sources and the mine sources are kinda tough to do so I'm not gonna be doing that but in my opinion maxing spirit and vitality can actually be detrimental because limit breaks obviously you build up limit breaks by taking damage 
And if you max your vitality and spirit, your physical and magical defense, then you're going to be taking less damage. You really only need to stat max for vitality and spirit. Well, let's say this. It's only helpful if you max vitality and spirit against ruby weapon because he hits really hard so in the early game you can't quite one shot enemies in the mid game you get really strong and essentially just one shot enemies with group target spells Actually, let me check their magic stats. So yeah, Cloud has a 24 magic. So maybe if you equip Cloud with the lightning material, you might be maybe able to one-shot enemies with lightning all. But whatever. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. But Cloud does have a higher magic stat than most of the characters in the game besides besides Eris. So yeah again pay attention to pay attention to the who's dealing the killing blow to enemies. Like I said earlier in the early game, you really want to get Barrett a lot of kills because you're not going to be using him in the mid game. I like to just try to get most of his limit breaks unlocked. We're going to proceed back the way we came. Brother, I'll save that limit break. Hopefully, Barrett can one shot. may not be able to okay proceed back up up the elevator it should all seem very familiar Pick up the MacGuffin. Alrighty, so. If you play the remake, you're, you'll recognize that you have to play a little mini game with the buttons to open the gate. You usually just have to get the timing right and hit the button at the same time. Kind of goofy, but. That's what you do. All right, we'll save here. So past this screen, there's gonna be a boss fight. So save their limit breaks. I guess I forgot to say. It's gonna help you out a lot. Alright. So there's gonna be a dialogue here. 
I'm gonna edit out that dialogue and then I'll cut straight to the bar. Alrighty, so skip to the dialogue and now we're fighting Airbuster. So you'll do a pinch or a tag on Airbuster, so best play is to wait until he turns his back toward a character like he did there and then just use a limit break on his back for huge damage. He's also weak to lightning so you can have characters use lightning magic. But obviously the limit break to ward his back is going to be doing the most damage. His attacks do hit kind of hard so wear out that restore materia. Use a potion if you have to. He didn't like that. That's really all there is to it. Got a Titan Bangle. We'll use that. We'll get good use out of that. So like I said, don't waste time level grinding in the early game. It's not very helpful. Just trivialize the game. Alrighty, so this dialogue choice will affect affection for Barrett if you say be strong. If you say I don't know if I can hold on, I think it increases Tifa's affection. Whatever. It's a pretty cool cutscene. Iconic FF7 moment. In 1997, that was pretty awesome. Still awesome in 2020. So, you fall down into Sector 5 and you crash through the roof of a church. The iconic church. And you meet the flower girl. Yep. So, there's a dialogue here. I think some of the choices you make affect Air's affection towards you. So, if you like Eris, I'm sure you're good. If you don't, then don't. I'll cut out the dialogue and I'll skip to the next section, the fighting section, where you have to try to escape from the church. So 